stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. David McKee of VITAS will now lead us with the invocation. Before I uh, do the invocation, I have a little poem here that I wrote that I would very much like to read to honor all of our veterans who are gathered here today. When America had an urgent need, everyone. Oh, you can be seated, please. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so let me read this program. Excuse me. You could have kept them uh, well, it Probably wouldn't have hurt, would it? <laughs> but please allow me to read this, and then I will bring us before the throne of Almighty God in prayer. When America had an urgent need, these brave ones, they stepped forward. No hesitation held them back. They were proud to take a stand for America. They left their families. They left their friends. They left behind a normal life. They left to serve God and country. They fought for freedom. They fought for peace. They fought in a foreign land. Many lost friends. Some lost their very lives in a long and brutal war. 
Now there's another type of veteran that also answered a call, a call to serve as well. A call to support those who were sent to fight. They gave of their time, their talents, and their treasures. We salute them too, every one of them. Today, we salute the noble and the brave ones among us. Today, we salute the ones gathered here with us. Today, we also salute those who have left this world and gone on out into eternity. So here to our country's heroes that are cut, that are a cut above the rest, let us give them all honor that is due. Give honor to our country's best. And now would you stand with me, please? And I'd like to ask if you would please to bow your heads with me as we go before the very throne of Almighty God. Our Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we know that in every age since the founding of this great country, a nation founded, conceived in liberty, a nation founded in God we trust. Through the ages you've called many men and women to take a stand to defend this country. Many have took that stand. Many of those are gathered with us today. We honor them that have gone on out into eternity. We honor those who gathered with us here today as we all enjoy the blessings of living in the land of the free and the home of the brave. We pray, dear God, that you would honor our attempt today to honor our veterans, but to honor the greatest veteran of all, Jesus Christ, who left heaven, came to earth, went to war for the souls of men. He won that war. He left this world, went back to heaven in victory. And I believe that in honoring him, dear God, we will also honor our veterans and our great country. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would like to introduce and have recognized the distinguished guests who have taken time from their busy schedule to share in this special day with our veterans and families. Senator Richard Blumenthal. Senator Christopher Murphy. Representative Dave, um, Rosa Delora, unfortunately, could not be here today. So she sent her aide, Allison Dodge. State Senator Gail Sloshberg, Rep Representative Themis Claritis, Representative Pam Stanetsky, Representative Charles Ferraro, and our own first selectman James Zioli. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the Director of Orange Community Services, Joan Cortella, who will say a few words. Good afternoon. I'm honored to welcome everyone today. Thank you to our dignitaries for coming. We're very happy to have you here today. We're here to honor our Orange veterans that have given bravely their service without question to our country in order for us to have the freedom we so often take for granted. We thank you for your dedication and loyalty to our country. Let our wall of honor 
serve as a constant reminder of the service and sacrifice of our Orange veterans, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you. Richard Blumenthal will honor us with a few words. Thank you. Uh, what a wonderful day. I am so proud and excited to be in Orange today, one of the most patriotic and veteran-dedicated towns in the whole country. And that fact is reflected in this wall of honor. I want to begin, really, by saying thank you to all the veterans who are here today. And if you could just stand or raise your hand so that we can thank you for your service to our nation, we would appreciate it. Thank you all. I'm here in an official capacity. I happen to be a member in the United States Senate of the Armed Services Committee and the Veterans Affairs Committee, among other committees. In fact, I'm the ranking member on the Veterans Affairs Committee. So today has special meaning to me in that way, but also as a dad, as the father of a Marine who has served in Afghanistan and a Navy officer who is now deployed somewhere around the world. The men and women we honor today are their role models. The men and women we honor today are an example, leadership by example, whose impact is way beyond the wars and conflicts where they served and sacrificed. It is as a role model for generations after them, my sons, your sons and daughters. This thing about service happens to run in families. And so we gather today as a family to say thank you. And my hope is that we will say thank you not only in a wall of honor, not just in words, but in fact in action, in deeds, to make sure that we keep faith with our veterans, that we give them the jobs and skill training, the health care and the homes that they need, to make sure that we leave no veteran behind. Today, in the greatest, strongest country in the history of the world, 22 veterans will take their own lives. I know that we are celebrating today and marking service, but many of those veterans have come back from our wars with their own inner wars, the wars they are fighting, continuing to fight against post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury. Not just Iraq and Afghanistan, but Vietnam and Korea, all our wars. When post-traumatic stress was known as battle fatigue or shell shock, they came back having served to a nation that still often fails to give them the health care they need. That's why I wrote and championed a bill called the Clay Hunt Suicide Prevention Bill, named after a Marine who came back from Afghanistan and took his own life, co-authored with John McCain, bipartisan, and signed by the President. It's a down payment. It's a first step. Let us take the next steps to make sure we keep faith with all of our veterans, meeting all of their needs in deed as well as word. I know that you share that feeling, which is why I am so grateful to you for honoring these Orange veterans who are among the great patriots in this great town, and to each of you for remembering now and for future generations what their service and sacrifice has meant for us as a nation. They are the ones who have kept us free and strong. Thank you, and God bless our great nation.
Thank you, Senator Blumenthal. Now I'd like to introduce Christopher Mur Murphy. Senator. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations to all of those that have been part of making this day possible. Uh, I admit I got a little sneak peek uh, at the wall. It's a beautiful testament uh, to the sacrifice that so many here in Orange have made. A small town that over the course of its history has uh, fought well above its weight class when it comes to the number of people who have served. And it's going to be the uh, veterans' names that are on this memorial scrolling across the screen. But as uh, all of the veterans here know, um, their names are certainly deserved, uh, but it's families that serve as well. Uh, and when Dick and I get to spend time with our soldiers and with our veterans, we're constantly reminded uh, that when a soldier signs up for duty, it's not just them, but their parents, but their children who are making that sacrifice as well. One percent of American families today are fighting to protect all of the rest of us. Uh, and it's something that we bring with us to this job every single day. Uh, I remember just about a year ago, uh, on my way back from visiting our troops in Afghanistan, stopping by a, a military hospital in Germany. And this is the hospital that takes uh, our wounded warriors straight off the field of battle, uh, holds them, nurses their wounds before they get transported back to the United States. And I met one young man who had, had the majority of his left arm taken from him by an explosive device on the side of a road. And he pulled me close and asked me what I could do to get him back to Afghanistan to join the men and women that he served with as fast as possible. He didn't understand at that moment that he was going back to the United States, that he wasn't going to be fighting again in Afghanistan. But it just serves as this um, wonderful, at some level, reminder uh, of who it is that has fought for us and are fighting for us, the level of dedication and sacrifice that's really hard to comprehend at times. Um, and so uh, Senator Blumenthal is right. Um, what we owe uh, our veterans is the understanding that the cost of the war is not just the cost of the C-130s and the F-35s and the ammunition and the artillery. The cost of a war includes every single dime that is necessitated to take care of those veterans when they return home. We shouldn't have a Department of Defense budget and a VA budget. We need to have a soldiers and veterans budget all together. That's what we're trying to fight for, and that's what this memorial will remind us of. One last thing. Um, I have uh, two young sons. Uh, I have a six-year-old and a three-year-old. And I pray every day that they're going to grow up in a peaceful world. I pray every day that they're not going to be called upon to have to defend this nation in an active war uh, at home or abroad. But I want them to know that the world in which they live, this country, uh, free, uh, with options available to them that exist in only a handful of corners of this world um, didn't come for free. And so this is a small memorial, um, but repeated over and over again uh, in community centers, on town greens, in high schools and elementary schools, serve as a reminder to the younger generation who might not have to fight in a war if we do things right, if we're lucky perhaps, uh, that every single day that they enjoy a peaceful world, uh, they owe that peace to the men and women in this room, to those whose names will be on this wall. Thank you uh, to Orange uh, for what you have done, uh, for the sacrifice that you and your families have made. Thank you for making this memorial, uh, this wall of honor, a reality. Thank you, Christopher Murphy. Next up, I'd like to introduce Allison Dodge, the representative from Rep um, Representative Rosa Dolores office. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Rosa is uh, in DC. They had scheduled both today uh, in the house, uh, so she wasn't able to join you, but she did uh, send a letter of greetings that she asked me to share with you. Dear friends, I am pleased to have this opportunity to extend my greetings to all of you as you gather to unveil the Wall of Honor here in Orange. 
This is a wonderful tribute and a special way to honor our veterans and reaffirms how grateful we all are for the dedication and commitment they demonstrated while serving our nation. It is that kind of community spirit that reminds us all of the debt we owe to those who have served in our nation's military. All of our nation's veterans deserve our gratitude. They fought to protect the freedom and democracy that underlie all that we do. It is easy to take our fundamental freedoms for granted, but we must never forget that the liberties we enjoy were hard won and not commonplace in the world. The tremendous hardships endured and sacrifices made by American soldiers have secured the peaceful and lawful society in which we live. My deepest thanks and appreciation to all of those who helped to organize today's event. We are a unique people because we live in a nation devoted to the ideals of freedom and democracy. We should be ever grateful to the dedicated individuals who helped to maintain the liberty and security we cherish. Please accept my heartfelt congratulations and very best wishes for a wonderful afternoon. Sincerely, Rosa DeLauro, Member of Congress. Thank you, Allison. Our first selectman, James Ely, has a proclamation to recognize this special day for Orange. Hands on the bell. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for all turning out for this special event today. We thank our dignitaries. We thank the Legion. I know all of you men over there. Congratulations to you and all of you in the audience who are part of that. It's uh, an outstanding, outstanding group, and all of you are an outstanding group. It's amazing to see how many of you in the group that I recognize, that I maybe didn't know were veterans. I think that that's um, a surprise to me. I know we have quite a few in Orange, but every time we have a different event, I see a couple more people that I didn't know in the past. I have to thank, I see our CERT group is represented down in back, and Barbie and our outstanding chorus over here. Thank you all, all so much for partaking in this. I can't uh, begin to thank, I, I guess I have to thank Joan Cretella our director of uh, community services and all the staff there. They do an outstanding job. But Joan came to me one day with a proposal, three or four sheets of paper stapled together. We'd really like to consider this. Will you please take a look at it and consider it? Okay, okay, put it in the pile over there. I'll take a look at it. And she stayed right on me. Jim, did you look at that yet? I'm getting to it. Well, we, we got to it. I said, Joan, I think it's a wonderful idea. How do you go about doing this? And she says, well, there's an organization, a company called Vitas. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and they came forward, Vitas Healthcare. These gentlemen over here are the representatives of that branch of this project that came to fruition. Without their help, cooperation, and dedication to this, that veterans honor out there would not be here in the town of Orange. And I have to give you a wholehearted thanks on behalf of myself, the Board of Selectmen, and the Town of Orange for bringing that forward. That will grow. That can change. It can be added to. It can be uh, a multitude of information of many of our veterans and honored service people of our town. And as far as I'm concerned, it can go even beyond that. So I'm, I'm truly thrilled for your cooperation in completing that for the town, with the town. So thank you very much for that. For all of you veterans and family in the room, my legislators sitting before me here are going to hate me for this. But I, I feel very strongly about it, and I wasn't going to say anything, but I have to. No matter which political party you are, I urge you to talk to your representatives and senators about being certain that all of the money needed that the state of Connecticut provides for honor guards at funerals for veterans is restored to its full amount. Thank you. I feel very strongly about that, 
and was fighting in my mind, do I make something that could be construed as political or not? I don't consider it political. I consider it a right, and I think every one of you needs to get your uh, thoughts expressed, and you have an opportunity today to do that. With that said, the proclamation. Whereas the town of Orange is proud to acknowledge the Veterans Memorial Wall Honor at the High Plains Community Center, and the Veterans Memorial Wall of Honor pays tribute to the men and women who have served our country. A scrolling picture frame will display the names and photos of ve current veterans from Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and Merchant Marines on the Veterans Wall of Honor. The Town of Orange is grateful for the partnership with Vitas Healthcare and Community Services. The partnership was instrumental in bringing the Veterans Memorial Wall to our community. The Veterans Memorial Wall of Honor will forever serve as a daily reminder of the service and sacrifices made by our veterans. Now therefore, I, James M. Zioli, first selectman of the Town of Orange, do hereby proclaim Friday, May 1st, as Veterans Memorial Wall of Honor Day in the Town of Orange. And witness whereof, I hear on set my hand the seal of the Town of Orange on the first day of May 2015. Thank you all. The ceremony will continue with the Nurses' Creed, the Orange Visiting Nurses Association, Nurse Maria Biondi. I am a member of the Army nursing team. My patients depend on me and trust me to provide compassionate and proficient care always. I nurture the most helpless and vulnerable and offer courage and hope to those in despair. I protect the dignity of every individual put in my charge. I tend to the physical and psychological wounds of our warriors and support the health safety, and welfare of every retired veteran. I am an advocate for family members who support and sustain their soldier during times of war. It is a privilege to care for each of these individuals, and I will always strive to be attentive and respectful of their needs and honor their uniquely divine human spirit. We are the Army nursing team. We honor our professional practice standards and live the soldier values. We believe strength and resilience in difficult times is the cornerstone of Army nursing. We embrace the diversity of our team and implicitly understand that we must maintain a unified, authentic, positive culture and support each other's physical, social, and environmental well-being. We have a collective responsibility to mentor and foster the professional growth of our newest team members so they may mentor those who follow. We remember those nursing professionals who came before us and honor their legacy, determination, and sacrifice. We are fundamentally committed to provide exceptional care to past, present and future generations who bravely defend and protect our nation. The Army nursing team, courage to care, courage to connect, and courage to change. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite our other dignitaries if they have anything they wish to say. <laughs> Hearing none. Plaque next week. Want the plaque next week? Nope. No. I will go for it. Okay. All right. I'd like to invite up Wayne Rios from Vitas. Wayne. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. There we go. I want to make sure the blood's flowing. <laughs> so, uh, we did have a shocking moment here because. We have politicians that didn't want to say anything, so mark this down, okay? 
I had to. I'm sorry. I am very sorry. Uh, uh, I just want to uh, touch on what Senator Murphy said earlier about the family and the children who are left behind to make sure the family continues to operate. The bills are paid. Uh, my father was in the service 33 years. We were left behind many times alone. So for those of you in this audience who are wives, children, who supported their loved ones when they were deployed, would you stand up so we can honor you, please? I will now read the uh, Soldiers' Creed. I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and I live the Army values. I will always place the mission first and I will never accept defeat. I will never quit and I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined, physically and mentally tough, trained and proficient in my warrior task and drills. I always maintain my arms, my equipment and myself. I am an expert and I am a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. The NCO Creed. No one is more professional than I. I am a non-commissioned officer, a leader of soldiers. As a non-commissioned officer, I realize I am a member of a time-honored corps, which is known as the backbone of the Army. I am proud of the corps of non-commissioned officers and will at all times conduct myself so as to bring credit upon the corps, military service, and my country, regardless of the situation in which I find myself. I will not use my grade, rank, or position to obtain pleasure, profit, or personal safety. Competence is my watchword. My two basic responsibilities will always be uppermost in my mind, accomplish of my mission and the welfare of my soldiers. I will strive to remain technically and tactically proficient. I'm aware of my role as a non-commissioned officer. I will fulfill my responsibilities inherent in that role. All soldiers are entitled to outstanding leadership. I will provide that leadership. Officers of my unit will have maximum time to accomplish their duties. They will not have to accomplish mine. I will earn the respect and confidence as well as that of my soldiers. I will be loyal to those whom I serve, senior, peers, subordinates alike. I will exercise initiative by taking the appropriate action in the absence of orders. I will not compromise my integrity nor my moral courage. I will not forget nor will I allow my comrades to forget. We are leaders, non-commissioned officers. At this time, we are going to be, at this time, we're going to have the chorus sing the military branch songs. When you hear your branch song, would you please stand? And if you're unable to stand, please raise your hand high and proud. At this time, we will start with the United States Army. We're going to sing through this twice. First, you will hear the words, then everybody will be able to join in the second time around. First verse only. <clears throat> over hill, over dale, we will hit the dusty trail as these case guns go rolling along. Counter march right about, hear those wagon soldiers shout while those case guns go rolling along. For as high, high he, the field of Hillary. Call out your numbers loud and strong. Wherever we go, you will always know that the caissons go rolling along. Everybody sing. Over hill, over dale, we will hit the dusty trail as those caissons go rolling along. Counter march right about, hear those wagon soldiers shout. Let those caissons go rolling along. For it's high, high he, 
field artillery. Call on your numbers loud and strong. And wherever we go, you will always know that those caissons go rolling along. At this time, the United States Navy. Anchors away, my boys, anchors away. Farewell to college joys. We sail at break of day, 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 day. Through our last night on shore, drink to the foam. Until we meet. Once more, we're wishing you a happy voyage home. Okay, everybody sing. Anchors away, my boys. Anchors away. Farewell to college joys. We at break of day, 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 day. Through our last night on shore. Drink to the foam until we meet once more. Here's wishing you a happy voyage home. United States Air Force. <laughs> Okay, off we go into the wide blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here they come, zooming to meet our thunder, and a boy's given the gun. Down we dive, spouting our flame from under, off with one hell of a roar. We live in fame or die in flame. Nothing can stop the U.S. Air Corps. And off we go into the wide blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here we come, zooming to meet our thunder, and a boy given the gun. Down we dive, spouting our flame from under, off with one hell of a roar. We live in fame, we're down in flame, nothing can stop the U.S. Air Corps. United States Marine Corps. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we will fight our country's battle on land and on the sea. First to fight for right and freedom and to keep our honor clean. We are proud to claim the title of United States Marine. Everybody. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we will fight our country's battle on the land and on the sea. First to fight for right and freedom and to keep our honor clean. We are proud to claim the title of United States Marine. United States Coast Guard. Okay. Shh, shh. So here's 
the Coast Guard's marching song. Please sing for land and sea, through surf and storm and howling grave, I shall is our guide, our fame and glory too, to fight, to save, or fight, to die, I call God, we are for you. Everybody. Semper, the close heart is the song we sing for land and sea, through <laughs> surf and storm and high. I shall our purpose be. Semper Paratus is our guide, our fame and glory too. To fight, to save, or fight to die, I call Scott, we are for you. Last but not least, Merchant Marines. Heave ho, my lads, heave ho. It's a long, long way to go. It's a long, long pull with our hatchets full. Yes, hi, waving though we see, fighting the trench is awful. Heave ho, my lads, heave ho. Let the sea roll high or low. We can cross any ocean, sail any river. Give us the goods and we'll deliver. Damn the submarines. We're the men of the merchant marines. One more time. Heave ho, my lads, heave ho. It's a long, long way to go. It's a long, long pull with our hatchets full. Braving the wind, fighting the sea, fighting the treacherous foe. Heave ho, my lads, heave ho. Let the sea roll high or low. We can cross any ocean, sail any river. Give us the goods and we'll deliver. Damn the submarines. We're the men of the merchant marines. Your book. Could we have a hand for the chorus before we get to the flag retirement, please? <laughs> Traditionally a symbol of liberty, the American flag has carried the message of freedom to many parts of the world. When the United States flag becomes worn, torn, faded, or badly soiled, it is time to replace it with a new flag. The old flag should be retired with the dignity and respect befitting of our nation. The traditional method of retirement is to incinerate the flag, but this does not mean that one should simply drop the entire flag into a fire. No, the retirement should be conducted with fidelity and significance. Today is a fitting end to our honor and remember ceremony excuse me, the Wall of Honor ceremony, we retire a worn United States flag, a symbol of America's orange honor, courage, and strength. Old Glory, I am the flag of the United States of America. My name is Old Glory. I fly atop the world's tallest buildings. I stand watch in America's halls of justice. I fly majestically over institutions of learning. I stand guard with power in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for peace, honor, truth, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident. I am arrogant. I am proud. When I am flown with my fellow banners, my head is a little higher, my colors a little truer, I bow to no one. 
I am recognized all over the world. I am worshipped. I am saluted. I am loved. I am revered. I am respected, and I am feared. I have fought in every battle of every war for more than 238 years. I was flown at Bally Forge, Gettysburg, Shiloh, and Appomattox. I was there at San Juan Hill, the Argonne Forest, Anzio, and the beaches of Normandy. I was there at Iwo Jima, Inchon, and Vietnam, and I was there in Afghanistan and Iraq. I've led my troops, I've been dirty, battle-worn, and tried, but service members cheer me, and I am proud. I have been born, burned, torn, and trampled in the streets of countries I have helped to free. It does not hurt, for I am invincible. I have been soiled upon, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my country. And when it is these whom I've served in battle, it hurts. But I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have slipped the bonds of earth and stood watch over the uncharted frontiers of space from my vantage point on the moon. I have borne silent witness to all of America's finest hours. But my finest hours are yet to come. When I am torn into strips and used as bandages for my wounded comrades in the battlefield, when I am flown at half-mast to honor my service members, or when I lie in the arms of a grieving parent at the grave of their fallen son or daughter, I am proud. My name is Old Glory. Dear God, long may I live. The first stripe, the 13 stripes stand for the 13 original colonies. Second stripe, the white stands for purity. The third stripe, third stripe, the red stands for courage. The fourth stripe, give me liberty or give me death. <clears throat> the fifth stripe, one if by land, Two if by C. <laughs> the sixth stripe, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessing of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. The seventh strike, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness.
The eighth strike, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. The ninth strike, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. Tenth strike. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. The eleventh strike, one nation under God. The twelfth strike, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. The thirteenth strike, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And our blue field, united we stand, divided we fall. At this time, I would like to ask Joan Cretella to come up, the director of the Highlands, uh, Highlands High, Plains. High Plains Community Center. I keep calling it the Orange Senior Center, so I apologize. I'd like to present her with this flag for her wall of honor. Thank you very much, Joan. Thank you. And this flag was flown today at the Nautilus, and we have the certificate of authenticity that I'd like to read. Historic ship Nautilus, SSN 571. This national ensign of the United States of America was proudly flown from the flagstaff of historic ship Nautilus SSN 571 on May 1, 2015, and is presented to High Plains Community Center in Orange, Connecticut, signed by D.A. Grimaldi, the Command Master Chief. Thank you. We'd also like to present her with a plaque from VTOS to the High Plains Community Center for their ongoing commitment to America's veterans. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, VTAS Innovative Hospice Care, for your patriotism and the beautiful plaque that we will place on our wall of honor. Please join us as uh, Pastor David McKee of uh, VTAS concludes this wonderful day with honoring and remembering with the benediction. The benediction will be followed by a rifle volley conducted by the American Legion Post 127 of Orange. That will be outside. The rifle volley benediction will be followed by playing of taps by Eli Baum. Would you take a moment and bow your heads with me, please? 
Oh my to God, as we come to the conclusion of another wonderful program, how honored I am to be here with my wife as we honor all of the veterans. I thank you, dear God, for this institution that we're at today. I pray for all the staff. I pray for all of those who labor so hard to make this place possible. I thank you, dear God, for VITAS, for all of those who work so hard in these programs behind the scenes. I pray, dear God, you would bless each and every one of them. But my God, we surely pray for all of our veterans. We pray, dear God, that you would bless them. We pray, dear God, that we as a nation would honor them by continuing to be the greatest nation on the face of the earth. We pray, dear God, that you would raise up great patriot Christian leaders to lead this nation to once again, indeed, be the greatest nation on the face of the earth. A nation that the world respects and, yea, even fears because of the great God that we serve. Lord, we love you, we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You, you will find in your program the words to God bless America. Please feel free to sing along with us.
right? At this time, I'd ask you all to take a, please be seated. Staff and dignitaries are going to retreat to the Wall of Honor. Thank you very much. 